There's been a few different forms of foldable phones that we've seen over the last year, but the one that made the most noise was Samsung's Galaxy Fold. As interesting as the Galaxy Fold was, it was clearly a first-generation product. People who used it really liked it, but had a long list of things that could be improved upon. And Samsung is fulfilling most of those wishes with the follow-up to its first foldable phone. Hello everyone, this is Abbas from Tech Radar, and this is our first look at the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. Please do subscribe to our channel, like and hit the bell icon if you enjoyed this video. Though the original Fold felt good in your hands, the Fold 2 feels a lot more premium. It's a bit wider and weightier, but thinner at the same time. The resistance of the cam hinge feels very consistent, and like the Z Flip, the Fold can be used at pretty much any angle. Also like the Z Flip, it has tiny brushes or nylon sweepers to make sure it keeps any dirt at bay. Unfortunately, it's still not water resistant, so you'll still need to treat it very carefully. The biggest complaint most buyers had with the original Note was that the front screen was too small. At just 4.6 inches, it wasn't big enough for anything other than taking phone calls or controlling your media. Typing was especially painful on that small and narrow screen, but that's changed in a big way with the Galaxy Z Fold 2. With a wider body and an edge-to-edge 6.2-inch screen, the Fold 2 feels much closer to a regular phone now. The inside screen is also slightly bigger, up from 7.3 inches to 7.6 inches. Thanks again to the wider size, narrower bezels, and the disappearance of that massive camera notch. The inside screen now supports a variable refresh rate that goes as high as 120Hz, making it smooth to operate. The crease is still there, but much like the original Fold, disappears after using it for a few moments. Other specs on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 include the latest Snapdragon 865 Plus processor, 12 gigs of RAM, and a non-expandable storage of 256 GB. That last one has me puzzled, especially for a phone that costs close to $2,000 or 7,000 dirhams. The new Fold supports three states, folded, half-folded, and unfolded. In the folded state, you can pretty much use it as a normal phone, while in a fully unfolded state, it acts like a tablet. The middle one, which is a hybrid stage, is called the flex mode that we originally saw on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip where the two sides of the screen are split, allowing for the content to take over on one side and controls on the other. Apps such as the camera app allow for the viewfinder to be on top, while the shutter and preview images at the bottom. YouTube, on the other hand, has the main video on top and its controls and related videos at the bottom. With the screen fully unfolded, apps can now work in a tablet state, supporting multiple panes. So for example, the Files app can now show you the folders on the left and its contents on the right. Messaging apps such as Outlook also behave in a similar fashion. Samsung's made good use of the camera app to work across these multiple states. You can put the Fold 2 in flex mode for longer exposures or time lapses without needing a tripod. You can also use the primary camera along with the front screen for better selfies. An additional mode uses the inside and the front screen, so both the photographer and the subject can see the photos being framed. There are three 12 megapixel cameras on the back of the Fold 2 and two punch hole selfie cameras. We'll make sure we check all of them out in our full review. There's a lot more to explore with the Galaxy Z Fold 2, but based on my initial impressions, I think Samsung has mostly gotten it right this time around. If foldable phones didn't interest you, the Fold 2 won't really change your mind. But if you bought the original Fold, you'll love the changes that Samsung has made with the Fold 2. If you were considering getting a Fold but didn't, you'd be happy that you waited, as the Fold 2 finally delivers on the promise of a phone and tablet in one. That is, if you can afford one. This is Abbas signing out. Stay tuned to Tech Radar for everything in the world of tech.